So today I want to talk about the new House Anti-Socialism Caucus that was started by Chris Stewart, a Republican out of Utah. Um, this is going to be something of a, I don't know, a trailer or an announcement of a future video that, that we're going to do on the channel. Um, because this issue, the existence of this caucus and some of the things that this guy is saying are incorrect and disingenuous to the degree that I think self-respecting moral individuals should ridicule and challenge these ideas for what they are, which is heavily talking point, influenced, under-researched, um, lowest common denominator anti-intellectualism. And so I want to read a quote here uh, that's from the article. I'll throw it up on screen as well. So this was, I think, in February. Uh, Chris Stewart said, uh, Socialism is a folly. Not only is it doomed to fail wherever it rears its head, it leaves a wake of destruction in lives and freedoms lost. So much time has passed from the fall of the Iron Curtain that many have internalized or, or never experienced socialism's ultimate price. If we fail to recall those dangerous times, the primitive appeal of socialism will advance and infect our institutions. Um, this is wrong on a number of levels. Um, and before I engage with it in this video, I want to state I am not a political scientist. Uh, nor am I a sociologist. My expertise are in literature, um, sp specifically fantasy literature, Ursula K. Le Guin, and pragmatism philosophy, that of Richard Rorty, Martha Nussbaum, um, Habermas, so on and so forth, Slavoj Zizek. Um, so to some degree, this is new to me. Um, only, the, only in the last couple of years have I, have I begun to read uh, social political theory uh, with any level of seriousness. And so... I will be making a follow-up video on this topic that will illustrate these ideas from a more academic perspective. But I do not think that I need to fully credentialize myself in this sense to observe that the ideas that are being presented here are wrong. I.e., I may not know how to build the entire house, but I can definitely tell you that taking a sledgehammer and smashing one of the walls mid-production is not the correct methodology. And so bearing that in mind, um, I want to read just another a tweet from, from April 3rd. So the, the first the quotation that I read you was from back in February. Now, this is, this is more recent from April 3rd because now this committee, this um, caucus has been approved. So he says, just received approval from the House for the formation of the Anti-Socialism Caucus. This caucus will defend individual liberty and free markets and highlight the dark history of socialism. So... The, the agenda here has nothing, I don't think, to do with an actual understanding of socialism or the desire to protect the individual freedom of the people. What this has to do with is protecting capitalism and protecting the status quo of power structures because many of the new lawmakers that have been elected and much of the younger generation's understanding of, of history and of the necessity for progress dictates policies that lean further and further to the left because the, what is it called, the Overton window has shifted so, so far to the right. Having said that, uh, the, the idea that socialism is, is an insidious force that will necessarily lead to the collapse of institutions in which it infects is a misdirection, is misinformation, is the citation needed. There's no evidence to support that socialism functions in this way because, of course, socialism is a spectrum of ideas. So out of Fox News here, ideas such as Medicare for All and the Green New Deal, a massive government intervention to combat climate change and income inequality, have quickly gone from fringe ideas to litmus tests for Democratic presidential candidates. Meanwhile, <clears throat> self-described Democratic socialists like Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez uh, from New York have floated tax rates as high as 70% for rich Americans. So, I want to point out here, I want, to, I, I want to highlight the rhetorical move that has taken place in this article so that even if people only see this video, 
that you at least know what's being done here. Whether you agree or disagree, I'm going to tell you what the what the the tactical move that has taken place is. So they want you to be afraid of socialism because they want you to think that it's a threat to capitalism, which of course it is, in the sense that capitalism requires to to flourish to the degree that it has it requires that socialist programs be marginalized so in that sense it's accurate but what follows is the idea that socialist ideas necessarily are incongruous with what we would think to as as being fair tax laws and so he's floating or fox news in this case floats 70 percent as though it is radical, unheard of, unjust, completely insane, when, in fact, we have had tax rates that were higher than that in the past. I'm not going to flood the screen with data here. It's, it's out there. This is, this is a matter of public record. Um, so the entire thing is disingenuous. Do you want to jump in and, and say anything here, Mike? Or, or... Oh, oh, yeah, for sure, definitely. One of the many sources of information that we both have read a lot of stuff. Like, And it's not just oh, you know, we specialized in fantasy or I, I preferred uh, science fiction, but like, not only did I have all the various classes I had to take in college, I also, I'm always reading things online, here, there. So we picked up a history book and this one gave me this uh, thought process where I realized when you see these presidents, they come into office and they're making these claims like, oh, I'm going to do this thing. I'm going to make it happen. When they come into office, they have to secure this political support from these big, huge corporations that are controlling our government. And so a lot of times that means they have to give up on some of those promises um, because a lot of times those corporate interests are saying, nope, we need the oil from the Middle East. That's what socialism is threatening. Socialism is threatening the ability of those corporations to come to the politicians and say, you can't do that because it hurts us. Because socialism will make it so that the people have more power. I mean, even if my understanding of socialism is wrong, what I'm really getting at is we need to pull that power out of the government, and that's what this caucus is fighting. Yes, with, without back to the people. Yes, without getting into a discussion of implementation or, or theory or whatever, the uh, socialism as a concept is merely the idea that the people who work should own the means of production, that the people who actually toil and do labor should be fairly compensated for their work. Yeah, and so that idea alone has spawned a wide spectrum of different political theories. I, I know a few months ago, me personally, you know, I wasn't following the news. I didn't, I didn't stay with it. I just got mad. I didn't understand a lot of it. Sometimes um, I've read a lot, a lot of things since then I've pushed myself a lot farther and I've realized that the, the, pol the politics game isn't just about talking to the peoples, talking to your constituency. It's about securing the support of other politicians, of businesses, of moving money because money is power. And the socialism or the power to the people or however you want to put it, whatever evil it is that this caucus is trying to fight, that's the systems that it threatens is this whole corrupt money chain that's just flooding into D.C. from all over the place. Um, and so I think it, my first thought when I saw this is like, this is McCarthyism. This is that same attitude and style of government that we saw in the 50s where they formed committees that created laws like anti-sedition that said things like, um, you can't have communists in government or we'll throw you in prison. Um, now they just have swapped communism for socialism and just as it was then, nobody I think really has a firm grasp on what those ideas actually mean or what we are actually talking about implementing. I don't care if you label it socialism, communism, Marsianism or some other ism. What I, I, we've said it before, I want basic things. I want simple things for all peoples, and they don't want it. They want to fight that status quo. They want to keep it how it is. They like those money structures. They like the power it gives them. And it's threatened because those people, we the people, are standing up and saying, no, this isn't good enough. You're not doing the job that we want the government to do. That was the whole point of American constitutionalism, the revolution, all that. We the people. It was to get the power to the people, to get away from kings, to get away from these oppressive systems, to get away from uh, the church, the Anglican church specifically at the time, um, to, to have the, the ability to give yourself your own destiny and not have the government come in and tell you, yeah, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't believe this thing. Um, and so I, I just, as much as she talks about freedom and so forth in her tweet, um, 
yeah, it, it just, I don't, I'm not buying it because that's not what freedom is. That's not what I think we need in the modern world is more suffering and oppression. And I think that's what they're after. Absolutely. Uh, I agree with everything you said. Um, I think you might have misgendered the owner of the tweet. Wasn't that from from the um, the senator? Uh, Chris Stewart? I assume that's a, a man, right? Mm -hmm. I thought um, the one or am I wrong? received approval. No, I don't know. Um, I didn't uh, catch that part of the article. They're both both of the things I read. The, the quotation and the tweet okay. are both from Chris Stewart. So if we have okay. if My we have apologies. if we have <laughs> errored and and misgendered you, Chris Stewart, our our apologies. Um, yeah. So in closing here, what I want to say is look forward to, like I said, another video from us that is going to be more formal. I don't know when I'm going to be able to get that finished because I want to, I want to do the due diligence. Um, and treat it as the, as I would treat an academic paper and see how that format works for the channel and, and works for us and our, our schedules. Um, but suffice it to say, it's not good that this caucus has been approved and it's not awesome for egalitarianism that there's going to be a machine intentionally disseminating under-researched and inaccurate platitudes about socialism what what people like us i'm a radical leftist what i want is health insurance for everyone i want food for everyone and i want education for everyone and i want that to be paid for with the money that is currently being held by rich people by corporations and by the military industrial complex and i think we should make that happen at any at by all means that that's that's the basis of my belief structure um as it stands now which is open to continuous self-criticism and the criticism of my peers as well as the influx of new information from reading various books on a weekly and daily basis and continuing a high level of academic research and so look forward to that and don't be fooled by fear-mongering rhetoric uh not socialism does not go from here sir have a bowl of soup to welcome to the gulag uh in exactly the way that they are implied.